Look, I'm a crime scene board. <laughs> What's something on I'm your mind? I'm not interrogating. Illegal jail. Stop framing random people. <laughs> You need a ladder? What? Well, female skill? detectives can do just as much. Welcome to Detective Mangoes, episode one. I am Miss Mango Bud. This is Mr. Mango Bud. <laughs> Welcome. I am your lad, Detective Mango, today, and I'm here to show you guys a unsolved case that I'm about to solve with my bare two hands. Well, not bare because I'm wearing my detective gloves, but it came in an evidence bag like this, like every professional. These are really tight. Every professional case does. I'm going to be wearing those gloves when I'm touching evidence, okay? Just keep that in mind because I'm a good detective. I don't want to corrupt the evidence. So it came in a bag like this and it was delivered straight to my doorstep saying, please, Stephanie Sue, we need you to solve this case. It was from... In 1992, I wasn't even born. <laughs> to solve the murder of Jamie Banks. Um, I have never done one of these before. You guys have highly requested it. I know it's taking you out of the detective zone, but this is called Unsolved Case Files. You order it on Amazon. They send you this envelope. Your mom opens it, and then she thinks that you're in some deep shit. And I'm like, no, mom, it's fine. It's literally a game. And it comes in this, super official. You open it up. You get this big old folder. And then you get three envelopes. So this envelope says bonus envelope A, B, and C. I have to open them after I hit objective one, two, and three. And this is the unsolved case file, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. I really hope case files are much bigger than this because if I'm fucking murdered, I hope that the police have a bigger file than this. By the way, just in case there's that one person that's new to this channel, this is a fake case. Like, I am not being so disrespectful while I'm handling a real case. Like, trust. I what literally. You a real case? <laughs> like, you know, like if this was a real case, you know, and like I'm like, you know, trying to be read at FBI and I've printed out the details of a real person who's been murdered, you know? Is this a real case? No. <laughs> No, 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 no. So inside of this folder, I'm gonna quickly unpack it with you. We've got an envelope and it says evidence. It says it contains photographs relevant to the investigation. This is Jamie Banks. She was a high schooler. She was a local teen and she was dead apparently in a suicide, but we all know that's a freaking lie. If you've been watching my main channel for a while, you know that's a freaking so lie. So you're gonna tell us what happened? Yes, and then we've got her school newspaper. We've what got is this? an inventory list. That's the main newspaper, like the local newspaper this is the school newspaper so students from the school will get together and write newspapers and then we've got the police department forms you know and then we've got the coroner I've studied enough crime to know this is a magically important piece of paper then we've got the evidence list we've got CCTV footage oh my god wow we've got all of her classmates taking a photo oh up in this bit god, and then we've got real. multiple witness forms and then we've got all of our four, five suspects. We've got five suspects today that we're gonna be investigating. We've got, this is Sophie Sunday. I'm Why sure. does it look like Vampire Diaries pictures? This is, oh my God, yeah, she looks just like Edward. This is Johnny Roca. He looks like Taylor Lautner. Oh my God, this looks like a Vampire Diary character. And then we too. have Dr. Benjamin Gelding. Okay, Benji right here. We've got Olivia Underwood. She's crying. Yeah, and then we've got Paul Pre. He's a fucking he murdered. Oh my god, they sure. all look like vampires. Yeah, they're a very huh. attractive high school bunch. None of my high school friends look like that. I'm just saying. So let me go over this real quick and let me tell you what happened to Jamie. Okay, so this is the story of Jamie Banks. She was 18 years old. She was at her local high school. So Jamie Banks, let me give you some background information. She seems to be mature. That's what everyone says she is. I took some notes of this case because I am a freaking detective. Okay, they say that she's well liked, she's mature, and she's always into something. I don't know what that means. I don't know how to feel about that. I found that in the local newspaper. Now, if you look at her school newspaper, it tells a very different story because it says things like, so she was part of the newspaper team, right? Mm -hmm. Which means that she helps write these little newspaper articles in her high school, and she's also part of the play. So she wanted to be an actress, and she played Romeo and Juliet the night before her alleged suicide. Mm -hmm. So she was, she was Juliet, okay? Whoa. And the school newspaper written by Craig Zimmerman 
Letterman literally said Jamie Banks bet bombs in Romeo and Juliet and it was just like a rip apart piece. He ripped Jamie Banks apart in this local newspaper or this school newspaper. He thinks she's horrible? Yeah. He literally says verbatim is a sad exception. This production has the talent but lacks heart. More specifically, it lacks a Juliet with the heart needed to gain the audience's empathy. And it's just a full page about how much he hates Juliet. Now, Robert Romero, we learn, played Romeo. So I feel like that's kind of important, okay? Wait, is that one of the suspects? Who played okay. Romeo? Romeo was, I guess he's not a suspect. Okay. And so this paper was written the night before, was released, and then she went to school that day, and in the morning before classes started, she went into the newspaper room, which is happens to be on the sixth floor of the school, mm -hmm. and then she jumped out of the window after she wrote this onto her computer. Now, this was 1992. So I find that to be very peculiar. She was inside of this newspaper classroom on the sixth floor. That was where she jumped, okay? The note that she had left on the computer says, the pressure was too much. I couldn't take it anymore. Goodbye, Jamie. That was what she said. Which none of this makes sense. I mean, she had a 3.5 GPA. I mean, she was living a good life. She was gonna be cast in a lot of other things that wasn't Romeo and Juliet. And who cares what Craig Zimmerman has to say? But a lot of people think that she was too sensitive. So she takes her acting very seriously. Her guidance counselor says she's so into all of her like roles that if anyone were to criticize it, she doesn't take it well. She takes it super to heart. So people suspect because this was written and released that this led her to commit suicide. Hmm. Now. What backs up this theory? The suicide note backs up the theory. And the second thing is, Dr. Benjamin Gelding said that she got treatment for bipolar tendencies and had had suicide thoughts before. That's why he's a suspect. And then, here's the security footage. The autopsy says that she either jumped or she was pushed. Okay. There's no evidence of any defense wounds, there's no wounds of struggle on her body or anything like that, but it they, they can't rule out a pushing. They can't say, we don't know for sure if she wasn't pushed. Okay. We just know she died from the fall. Now, to make matters even more confusing, at the time that she jumped to her death or was pushed to her death, this school photo was being taken by every administrator, every teacher, every guidance counselor, and every student, every faculty member at the school. All all of them are in this picture, which means that they all have a very stern alibi, except for five people, which we have as our suspects. Huh. That is so cool. This is Craig Zimmerman, the dude who wrote the newspaper. He looks like a hater. This is a very interesting crime scene photo. <laughs> Wait, yeah. one of her shoes is off. Do you see that? One of her shoes is off. What the f that is really alarming. I feel like I just cracked the code or something. Yeah, you're like really <laughs> excited. And then we got the dude who played Romeo. <laughs> you're gonna die. And then you've got Principal Janice. Who is that? In principal. And then you've got Joey Ferrari. I'm not fucking making this shit up. His name's Joey Ferrari and he looks like that. And then we've got something interesting. So in her pocket, the only thing that they found was a tiny little notebook. And in green pen, she had written all these things, which they assumed to be math problems. It says, talk to Joey, see what he says at the end of it. Oh, it's like an escape room. Right? So you got a little math problem to solve. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this picture is. Oh, Verona Voice. This Verona is Voice is the newspaper. So this is the door to the newspaper room, I, I'm assuming. And then... And there's a bunch of scribbles on the, on the board. And then we have the contents of her pocket. So she had a tiny bottle that was marked poison. There was nothing in there, so it just seems like maybe it was for fun. And then you had a set of keys that says, Stop! Hammer time! And then you have a pen, and then you've got a $100 bill. That was what was found in her pocket. And that's all that's in the evidence drawer. So. We're just gonna get started. I mean, she fell six, 70 to 90 feet to her death. By the time that the paramedics already arrived there, she had already been pronounced dead. Now, mm -hmm. what's very interesting is guess who found her? Who's the, the dude guy? in the picture is Romeo from Romeo and Juliet. But he's not a suspect. Yeah, he's not a suspect. I don't know why. So we've got these witness reports that I have yet to read. We're gonna go over these. So we've got Robert Romeo. Let's go over his witness report. It says that he was the first one to find Jamie's body. He said that seeing her laying there was a horrible experience and he'd never seen anything like that in my life. I mean, I'd really hope so that you've never seen dead bodies in your life. You were probably only like 17 at the time. And he said he was in the first floor bathroom. He lost track of time because he kept reading Craig's review over and over again. This was the 
the best review I've ever gotten, he said. So Craig loves Romeo, but he didn't freaking like Jamie. He didn't like Juliet. Should I set up these characters up here? So Romero, he was Romeo. Oh, his name is Robert. My bad. Robert, who is Romeo. According to this report, Romeo found her at 1010. And then Craig is bad review. So Craig is the dude that wrote the bad review about Juliet, the one that allegedly committed suicide, but wrote a dashing review for Romeo. I'm a little upset by this. We've got Joey Ferrari. I'm very interested in who the hell Joey Ferrari is, right? Because I read the rest of these papers and I feel like they didn't think that I was gonna read through all of this because there's a lot of humbo jumbo in here. And it says that Joey Ferrari is the Spartan football team, which is this high school's football team. And he is the main dude. He's the one that was gonna bring the game into a win and he ended up just bombing the entire thing and that was also the night before her alleged suicide wait that's not him it's rocco it's oh, johnny, Ro rocco. johnny rocco this is the footballer dude. this is the football boy okay then who's that joey just joey's not a subset game. suspect no suspect this is getting complex yeah i think we should process learn everything yeah. and then get back if we find something different yes, right we're gonna process this Okay, so this is interesting because this, the police deem in their evidence pile, of course they do, they said that, that they assumed those were math equations, like a math notebook. But when you look at it, look, do you see the first line? What's the first line, honey? Colts, Colts. right? State championships preview, Spartans versus Colts. So is this something to do with football? So what did the police say? They said it looked like math. They said but it looked like math. a math notebook, but why would it have cults? And I've never had math like that before, and maybe the police don't know how to do math. <laughs> and then it says Sorry. hornets. See, these sounds like team names. Ducks, badgers, yeah. rams, eagles, lions, brothers, explorers. Joey Ferrari is a reporter. Oh. I just Talk found it Joey. here. Talk to Joey! Oh, talk to Joey. Talk to Joey. Joey is a reporter, yeah. and he's one of the reporter for this newspaper. Did he write about the Spartans and stuff? Wait, wait, wait. Hurt in the halls. What are you doing for Thanksgiving break? Road trip, baby. Johnny and I are heading to Atlanta City. I have family there. Johnny is the dude who bombed. Wait, you want to know what's crazy? What? I was actually wrong. The football game was not the night before her death. Okay. It was the day of her death. So she died in the morning, and then at night they had Spartans versus Cole and he bombed. They'd never seen him play so badly in his entire life. Mm. They assumed he was gonna get crazy scholarships because he's so good at football, but then all of a sudden, he couldn't play that night. Why? Was something on your mind, Johnny Rocca? Was something on your mind? I'm not interrogating, <laughs> sorry. In school's newspaper, there's an article written by Jamie Banks, right here. And it says, major investigative expose coming next week. I wanted to apologize to all the readers who noticed I hadn't published my regular monthly investigative report in October. I am currently concluding research on a huge expose that is sure to shock everyone at this school along with the entire Verona community. It will be mind-blowing story of my four years of investigative journalism here. This expose will make the investigation about Mr. Griffin stealing wooden ice cream spoons from the cafeteria look like a joke. Stay tuned to next week's paper and prepare to view some of your most revered East Verona Spartans in a whole new light. He's a Spartan, a football player. She says, prepare to view some of your most revered, respected Spartans in a whole new light. So it's him. She's trying to expose this guy. Yeah, or like football team. Just by reading my side, I only read these two papers. Okay. I read this note, this random scoreboard, right? So like you were saying, it has to do with the teams. The teams. And I'm reading this news article written by Joey Ferrari. And she's saying, ask Joey and see what he says. And he was talking about the championship that's happening that night between Joey and what is it, Coates? Yeah. So on here it says, it's easy to see why these two teams are facing each other in the championship. Consider how hard they fought one another in the season opener. The Spartans nearly blew a 10 point lead with less than two minutes left when Johnny Rocco infamously fumbled, this dude fumbled the ball right into the opposing team's hands for an easy defensive touchdown. Fortunately, the onside kick failed and Johnny Rocco held the ball on the following possession to get a win for the Spartan, despite failing to cover the 
thread. And on here, if you look at it, it seems like these are different teams that Spartan has played. They've won every single one of them. And then if I look at down here, I didn't understand, so I had to Google it. What is FUM dash quarter? Yeah. So FUM stands for fumble per quarter. And it says one, two, three, four. So each quarter, how many fumble? First quarter, zero. Second quarter, two. Third quarter, one. Fourth quarter, 13. So is he working? For the other side. For the other team. Is that 13 fumble? What is fumble? You throw the ball or something? Like I guess you fucked up. You fucked it up, right? So he fucked up 13 times for the other team. I think that's what it means. Okay, I think so too because listen to this. So I read four of the witness statements. I haven't gone into the five suspects yet, but I read the witness statements of Romeo, the dude who played Romeo, found her body. Mm -hmm. Craig Zimmerman, the dude who wrote the bad newspaper about her. Yep. The principal and also Joey Ferrari, the other newspaper writer that wrote about the football teams. So Janice Dowling, that's the principal. She said that she had canceled um, third period Period, she wanted everyone to take a massive all school yes. photo, right? Because they were having this massive game tonight. And so she had Mrs. Marjorie or whatever take the picture. And then she said Robert came in looking for her. Who's Robert? Romeo. Romeo came in looking for her and was like, oh my God, oh my God, please help. And he said that he had been washing his hands in the bathroom of the first floor when he heard a scream and a thump and he ran outside and he saw her. He saw Jamie laying there. Yes. And then when Miss Janice walked outside. Principal near, walked principal outside. Channel, principal walked outside. She saw two people who were standing near her body already. Sophia Sunday. You want to know who this is? This is Johnny's girlfriend. And then Olivia Underwood. Do you guys know what an understudy is? An understudy means in any play, even if it's as big as Hamilton. If the main lead gets sick, they always have someone to take oh, over. They're just yeah. literally waiting for them to get sick. Back up. Back up. She was the backup for Juliet. The principal tells the police, if you want better information on Jamie, because I didn't really know her well, you have to ask the guidance counselor, Mr. Gelding. He is also the head teacher in charge of the newspaper committee. She said, or you can ask Paul. Mr. Paul is the drama teacher who directed Romeo and Juliet, and he's loved by the female students. He's loved by the female students. Yeah, so is this an Ezra Fitz moment? I don't know. Let's go into Craig Zimmerman's account. The bad newspaper dude. We thought he was just a rude bozo, a mean person, a bully. But actually, he said he was one of her closest friends. And he wanted to be more, but he was upset when Jamie denied him. And that's why he wrote that angry review on her. He's and salty he, yeah. because he got rejected? Yeah, and immediately in the prep rally when, you know, they were taking the picture, someone came in and was like, somebody jumped and the rumor was spreading. He was like, oh no, he was looking for Jamie because he was scared about the emotions Jamie was feeling after reading his report on her. And he said that he met with the guidance counselor, the old man, before the prep rally to see how he could fix this because he felt so bad after the review went out. And he says that this dude is always looking out for Jamie. I don't know, seems creepy. And he said that Jamie told him a couple nights ago when he tried to, you know, get with her, that Jamie liked somebody else. And he was like, but who? Like, who could you possibly like? Like, we're like best friends. And she said, I can't tell anyone who I like because lots of people will get hurt. Like Paul, maybe? Like maybe. the teacher? Yeah, maybe it's a Ezra Fitz moment. Pretty Little Liars moment. Arya, Ezra. And then let's talk about Robert's account. Romeo's account. Romeo said that he was so excited because this is the best review he's ever gotten from Craig on playing Romeo. And so he he was like so distracted in the bathroom and he kept looking at himself in the mirror and he was just being a fucking narcissist. And he said, you know, it must have really hurt Jamie because she was obsessed with the play. Like even before the play started, she would stay till midnight helping set up and stuff. And get this, who's the drama teacher? Stay till midnight helping set up. And then what's even creepier is that he believes Romeo believes that Jamie was so obsessed with the play that she would even purchase things for the set because he once overheard Paul tell Jamie, I'll be paying you back. So he just assumed it had to do with buying props for the set. There's money uh -huh. and the poison bottle. What does that mean? Maybe it was for the set because they do drink poison, I think. Oh, Julia drink poison. Yeah. And then he says, He's excited for the next show on Saturday because him and Olivia, the understudy, have 
Chef's Kisses Chemistry. They're doing a different show together. The same Romeo and Juliet. It goes for multiple weekends, but Jamie's dead. But he thinks it's fine because him and Olivia have amazing chemistry. He actually wanted Olivia to be the lead for Juliet, but Paul wanted Jamie. Now let's talk about Joey Ferrari. The dude who was writing about all of this shit, about, about the Spartans and the Colts. He said he was the last person in the newspaper room before Jamie. He went there super early in the morning. Uh -huh. The door was locked, the lights were out, but because he's a senior, Jamie is a sophomore. Because uh -huh. he's a senior, he had the keys. And so he opens the doors, he goes in, and he shuts the door behind him. He opens the window because it was getting super hot in there. That's why he left the window open. Uh -huh. And he was writing his Spartan articles. And get this, uh -huh. there was a game that night, and he says he always writes about the games beforehand, and then he inserts the numbers because he always knows how the game will end. For some reason, he's just really good at guessing it. And he said that on the record to the police. He said on the record, I want to say that most believe that Spartans will win this round, but I believe the Colts will win. And then later that night, guess who won this game? The Colts. Now, he also mentions he asked the guidance counselor, the old dude, the newspaper dude, mm -hmm. to become the head editor. And Jamie also asked, but he gave the job to Craig, the bad review man. Now, here's what's also interesting. After the, uh, the principal saw what had happened and she looked up and saw that the window was open to the newspaper room, right? Yeah. She wanted Mr. Griffin, a random teacher, I can't find him, to go and guard the door with Romeo. And so they go to the newspaper room and because neither of them are part of the newspaper, they can't open the door and they said it was locked and this is the only way in or out. So if someone was in that room with her when she jumped slash was pushed in my speculation, they must have gotten out really early or they could have locked the doors. All they know is that by the time that they got out to the newspaper room, it was locked. And nobody, After she jumped? And nobody was in there when the police opened it up. So either somebody got out of there ASAP, or they had a key. I don't know how the newspaper room works yet. So why do you think Spartan is cheating? Like, why do you assume that? Because what? Joey was saying things like, I always know how it's going to end. What does that mean? Because he writes for it. And he says he always knows how it's going to end. And he, you told me he's friends with Ronnie. Oh, so Johnny. you're saying Joey got the download from Johnny that they're going to let... The Colts win. But this was written before the game, no? This is before the game. You say, I expect yeah. to see a fantastic football. Then he switched it up. He says he expects to see a great thing, right? Yeah. That's what he wrote. But when he talks to the police... Yeah. He says, let this be on record, that his prediction is most believe that the Spartans will win, but he believes the Colts will win. And he said he went into the newspaper room to write that article before even the game happened because he almost always gets it right. So why would he switch it up all of a sudden, no? That's weird, don't you think? So on here, he say, I put every dollar on Spartan to every win the game. Every dollar. Why would he say every dollar? I'd put every dollar I have on Spartan to win the game. Why would he say every dollar? It sounds like some, some bribery shit is going on. Because think about it, why would he lose? The only time you fumble is because you're getting paid to fumble. Right. Why would you tank your own career to fumble unless you've got something even better on the other side? And then he said, I'd bet every dollar that the Spartans will win. And then suddenly he's like, just between you and me, cops, I know the Colts are gonna win tonight. It's kind of confusing. I need to think about it. So the timelines got a little bit confusing. The detective Mangos got into a little bit of an argument. So this article yeah. is not written that morning. No. Because no. you made it sound like it's written. This was released that morning. So it was right. probably written the day before. So this was written mm -hmm. a day or two or how many yes. days before he said that. I'm not betting, man. But if, if I had to, for the outcome, blah, 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 I'd put every dollar I have on Spartan to win the game. Came out. The day that she committed suicide. Suicide. So her his story has changed from putting every dollar on Spartan to I'm betting Colts will win. And I'm always right. So yes. there's something changed yes. among those, those and times. And he's friends with a team member, Johnny Roca. So Stephanie's assuming, I'm sorry, Detective yeah. Mango is assuming. <laughs> put some respect. Assuming yeah. that, he's saying put every dollar so he wants people to bet on Spartan. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, he got the information from Johnny and then he's betting on Colts. Colts. 
so he won by that. Yeah. She's thinking there's some money involved. I feel like them. there's some weird betting between these high school teams, and that's what Jamie was gonna uncover. Because look at this. Maybe she's counting all of these like weird instances mm -hmm. that Johnny is doing. And if the high school kids are doing it, I'd be willing to bet every dollar that the adults are somehow a part of it. I just found something and what I'm did getting you find? goosebumps. Why? Remember this photo I took I showed ya? Yes. Her shoes was off. I'm looking at security camera footage. Everything looks normal. Nobody. Boom. Next second she's here. Right here. Nothing. Next second. There's a shoe. Is it second by second? There's no gap? It's second by second. So that means someone she, threw it? Yes. She was down here at 31 second. 10 10 31. Yeah. In 10 10 38, there's a shoe. And then two seconds later, she was found. By who? Romeo. Romeo. So it couldn't have been him. Correct. So someone threw the shoes down. That means she was killed. And Romeo didn't put the shoes there. No. That means someone was up there. I'm almost done reading all the rest of their witness statements. We've got two more to go and we're gonna figure out who wasn't there. This is about to get crazy. <laughs> so this is the guidance counselor. He's a little bit of a nobody. Let's talk about the creepiest person in the room. This is Mr. Paul. He's also the drama teacher. And his alibi was the fact that he said that he was fixing the set when everyone was going to the pep rally because the set had been broken. There's gonna be another show Saturday. The show must go on. He has to fix it. And he kept saying we in the transcript between him and the police and the police would say what do you mean we and he goes no I was there alone and he also said something suspicious which is that Romeo told him that someone had died like Jamie had died but it doesn't make sense because I don't see that anywhere else like Romeo never said and then I ran to the in drama room and told him so I mean I don't know all of this is really weird he says that he came by and told him everything and he keeps trying to put the blame on to Craig, the dude that wrote the bad, bad review. review. And he said that he's behind it all. You have to interrogate him. And the way that he talks about Jamie is really weird. So he's 29 years old and he's been Jamie's drama teacher for four years since she was a freshman. And he says that he watched her grow into the mature, beautiful woman. She's one of the most talented women he's ever met. She's got an old soul. She's 10 years older than she actually is in her vibe, in her soul you know very creepy and so then let's talk about this dude by the name of Johnny so Johnny dated Jamie back a couple years ago in a summer short period of time. very short period of time and he said that he heard a loud scream when he was on the second floor with his girlfriend yeah. Sophie Sunday Sophie Sunday and Johnny are dating now here's the interesting thing Sophie Sunday is a cheerleader and her co her dad is the coach of his football team and so the police are kind of suspecting that maybe he still liked Jamie but was dating Sunday Sunday more to progress his entire career because he was the freaking coach and he said that tons of girls are into sports betting and that's probably why that she had so many weird things written in her notebook she was probably betting on games and guess who was the bookie the booker of all the sports games Ferrari Joey Ferrari he was taking in all Wait, the bets betting? Johnny says that Jamie was probably betting. But we're thinking that Jamie is trying to expose yeah. that. Yeah, and he says that Joey takes all the bets. Now, the very interesting thing is that these two are each other's alibis. So Sophie Sunday, the preppy cheerleader that she is, before the pep rally, she had spilled soda all over her shirt. She got sad, she was crying. She was like, oh my God, they're gonna see the stain in my shirt. And so she ran into the girls' bathroom after second period on the second floor. Uh -huh. And Joey had escorted her to the bathroom and he was waiting outside and then the all went emptied out, everyone went to the pep rally, and she was crying, crying, crying in the bathroom, and he decided to go into the girl's bathroom, never trust a dude like that, and they started making out in the bathroom. And then they heard a scream, they looked out the window, and they saw that Jamie was there. And so Sophie runs straight to Jamie's body and he runs into the pep rally to tell everyone what happened. So they split ways. So she was found near the body. Now let's talk about Olivia Underwood, the understudy, okay? She's kind of creepy too. She's creepy. She said that she had a first period with Jamie and they were in like a typewriting class. Uh -huh. And she said that she suddenly felt ill out of nowhere. So I don't know if that has anything to do with the poison that was in Jamie's pocket. But no. she said that she was violently ill out of nowhere and she went into the first floor of the girl's bathroom. And that's when she heard a scream. And she looked out and it was Jamie. And so she ran out there. So she was the second person to see the body. She said she saw Robert, yeah. Romeo, 
and then he left to go tell the guidance or the principal and she stayed with the body and then Sophie Sunday came down. She said that she wanted to walk to the pep rally with Jamie, but Jamie was like, I've got to go take care of something in the newspaper around. And so she was like, okay, whatever. And she also mentions that Jamie might be in a relationship with the drama teacher. She doesn't understand how Jamie could land the role of Juliet when she just wasn't that good. And Olivia was obviously better. She thinks she's obviously better. But it's right. because Paul, the drama teacher, was in love with her. That's what she thinks. Yeah. No, I read this guy. Uh -huh. He said that Jamie got the role because Jamie told the drama teacher that she's in a very special relationship with someone. That's why she can relate to Juliet a lot better. And that's how she got the role. So the way that he told the story is Jamie also told the drama teacher that she's in the relationship. So everybody's talking about this relationship, but nobody knows who she's in the relationship with. Does that make sense? He also mentioned that. Oh, he did mention the relationship? Drama teacher. What did he say? The detective said, did Jamie ever tell you about the affair she was having? Paul says, what? What are you talking about? Was that in the suicide note? And the detective says, we heard she was seeing someone, but it was a secret. And he says, now that you mention it, I do remember her saying something like that. During auditions, she said something about relating to the character because her own forbidden relationship. I don't know, maybe that's why she was so perfect for the role, you know, a young, attractive girl with a full heart struggling with a forbidden romance. I recall her saying something like that. Something about she wanted to scream it from the rooftops but couldn't. Or something like that. I don't know. Teenage girls say a lot of weird stuff. Oh, so he is very suspicious. Yeah, because he said, what did she mention in the suicide note? Because mm. maybe he's like, do the police know that it's me? Type of vibe. That means he's not the one that who wrote the suicide note. Oh. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because suicide note is so simple. It's literally just this. So that means... And I'm assuming somebody typed this. Yeah. What? It was Johnny giving the newspaper, the um the official newspaper, not the school newspaper. Where is it? Oh no, we lost evidence. No, no, no! <laughs> Don't do that. We lost evidence. We can't be those cops. Should we just pin it on Johnny? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call it a day. You wanna go get some fun? Oh, it's right here. Oh, okay, give me the suicide note. Suicide note says the pressure was too much. I couldn't take it anymore. Goodbye. Oh, he did say the pressure. The only thing Roka had to say about the dreadful performance was I just felt really empty out there. Like I was all alone. I couldn't focus. It was really loud and the pressure, it was too high. I don't know. Okay. Well, it does. There are some similarities, yeah, but that's not bit. enough. Okay, circumstantial. Circumstantial evidence. Not Overruled. Even. <laughs> Boom. Ah! Okay, so it says after we realized that she was not in the room by herself, which we did, hence the shoe, we can open envelope number one, envelope A. Oh, okay, here. Jamie Banks, it's another newspaper clipping. Find the suspect who is lying is our next objective. One out of the five suspects lied about where they were on the day Jamie Banks died. Then we can open the next objective. And then I have the National Foundation for Suicide Prevention. This seems really heavy. Okay. So why don't we clean this up and then read. Don't to her, baby. So she says that he really likes her. And that's why he oh. wanted her to get the role of Juliet. Because oh. he felt like if they played that role on stage, they would just fall in love together. Wait, so the only thing in the envelope is this little piece of paper and that thing? Yeah. There's nothing else. Yeah. Look, I'm a crime scene board. <laughs> so Jamie, weird relationship with drama teacher, 29 years old, 10 years her senior, illegal, jail. Then she used to date Johnny Rocco, sports betting dude who's now dating tattoo girl. She has his name tattooed on his ankle. Talk about crazy. How did her parents allow it? And she she's the daughter of the football coach. Yeah. Craig Zimmerman loves Jamie, the understudy and Romeo allegedly had a thing, and where does the guidance counselor fit into this? And sports betting? Sports betting. Well, Ferrari is a big one. Yeah. I don't know, dude. I feel like the newspaper man, the guidance counselor, had to know about the sports betting. Apparently everyone knows. But nobody said anything. They know that Ferrari is doing this. And this is a letter by the mom. So we just realized that we actually have to go and verify that we found the right clue. Otherwise, then we would solve this case and it'd be fucking wrong and that'd be horrendous. So they have a so website that we're supposed to go on to verify that we got the right answer. So there's a bunch of choices. So the one we use is the camera, right? Yes. 
the security footage. They asked me which two frames are you looking at. Yes. So Let we got the right choice. Okay, so I've got the next objective. I okay. know exactly who lied in their witness statements. Does that okay. mean that they were in the room with Jamie? I have no freaking idea. But I knew that old man was suspicious since what? the moment I laid eyes on him. This is suspicious. We got the suicide note. The parents said it was a surprise that the counselor would see that because she didn't even know that they were seeing a counselor. The mom said they didn't even know Jamie was seeing a school counselor, but you know teenagers do things behind their parents' back or whatever. And I thought it was very suspicious that in the police reports, they're going off of this man's thinking. And I hate when true crime people do that. I hate when all these police and all these true crimes are like, well, she must be suicidal because like one time she said she was really sad. And so I read over his witness report and he had a conversation with the police and they said you have the keys to the newspaper room do you not he said you think someone was in the room with her that's a shock well I'm quite sure Joey Ferrari was the last one in the room because I spoke with every member of the newspaper team and I asked them and they asked him when he was last in the room he said yeah well of course but I haven't been in that room all day certain I left my pad of hall passes in there last night I didn't pick them up this morning and the police haven't let me back in the room to get them yes Joey Ferrari's statement. <laughs> It was first period and I had study hall in the cafeteria. Mr. Griffin is my teacher there and he lets me go up to the newspaper room if I have a pass from Dr. Gelding to finish up an article. But he said he hadn't had access to his notepad of hall passes since last night. But the day of the suicide, he got a hall pass from Dr. Gelding. <laughs> that was wrong. You are wrong. Really? You didn't finish the whole paper. Let me see. Keep reading. Where's the paper part? He gave him a hall pass last night. The police asked. Uh, Do you see that? That was cute. Nice try. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> Man, you would be a very bad cop. <laughs> I get emotional. Okay, so we looked at it, and I thought this was too easy that this could not be it. Like, it had to be real. But Paul, the drama teacher, this creepy dude that seems obsessive over Jamie says, I couldn't go to the pep rally because we had to fix an issue with the set before the next show on Saturday. And the detective says, we, who else is with you? And he says, well, I was by myself. All the students were at the rally. I didn't hear about what happened until Robert Romeo came by. And then it was quiet. And then they said, Mr. Preakness, you were saying? And he said, um, yeah, Robert came by and told me she had jumped. It was such a shock. But Robert, his witness statement never mentions that. It took me a moment to realize I needed to get help and everybody was in the gym. So I ran over there and got Mrs. Dowling and a bunch of other teachers and I brought them back to her. So he went to the gym, not the theater. Yeah. That's suspicious. But okay. what if he came by later? But then they would say something. Okay, I'm gonna just gonna test it, okay? Right here is number two, which suspect is lying. We're gonna try... Paul. Paul. Check my answer. Sorry, but you might be focused on the wrong suspect. Okay, let's look at Johnny and Sunday. We can get a hint. Get a hint. <laughs> hint number one, the liar was not female. Okay, so then you look at the guidance dude and I'll look at Johnny. Are Joey Ferrari and all these people in it or not? No, they're not. Wow. There are only five suspects. Stop framing random people. <laughs> okay, okay, you might be right. I think I found something. Why? The reason why I picked these two up, this is... Craig Zimmerman, the writer. The bad writer, review. bad review, Zimmerman. Okay. And this is the old man. They chat, but read the report where he mentioned the teacher. I even met with Mr. Gelding second period before the pep rally. He pulled me out of Miss Marston's class to talk about the review together. We came up with a plan to try to fix the mistake. Gelding was always looking out for Jamie. He pulled me out and then read it here. This is what he said about it. Session. Police ask him, were you in the room alone? He says, I had a session with Craig Zimmerman before the pep rally regarding the awful review. I sensed hidden tension I needed to resolve. Seems he'd opened up to her about his amorous feelings on Tuesday, blah, blah, blah. I believe he really, we talked in my office second period and made a plan for him to resolve the situation. We were done near the end of second period. She made it seem like he pulled him out, but this one seems like he came to him. Am I crazy? Yeah, it seems like it adds up. It does add up? Yeah. Damn it! So this letter is from the principal to whom it may concern. So it seems like everybody has moved on with their lives, right? So we know that Johnny Boy over here got married to Sophie Sundy. You didn't tell them that yet, right? Yeah, yeah. They got married and they have a kid. And Paul, Paul the drama man, went to Jamie's grave while his mom was there and he was crying and he looked like he wanted to tell Jamie's mom something, but then he ended up like n walking away and never coming back to the grave. And then Jamie's dad ended up dying because he just had so much heartache from the loss of Jamie. So all of it's really confusing. Now Janice decides to stir skirt 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 
more Janice straight up. Janice is the principal. So she's pretty much just saying like, listen guys, Dr. Gelding, I heard you guys are investigating him, but he's not the one because, I mean, I remember that day vividly. He came into the art studio where Jamie was and he was bringing Craig Zimmerman into the art studio. We already knew that. And even though he was in a rush, everyone was showing him all of their things and he was so kind and he was like, that's amazing. And it's crazy to think that mere moments later, he could murder a student. There's no way, he's too lovely. I mean, that's all she says. A pristine record, incredible and impeccable integrity. Holy Got the shit. shit. So this is Jamie's obituary that was an envelope. I don't freaking know, I think number one, right? And on the back of it, I'm like, none of this matters. And so I tossed it aside after reading the front of it, but it says, Happened last week, just before school began, early Friday morning. His wife of 44 years, Mrs. Bertha Sampson, said she and her husband are eternally grateful for Dakota taking the time to learn CPR. Saved Sampson's life. Keep that in mind. And then we look at this. Allegedly, Dr. Dr. Benjamin fucking Gertrude, <laughs> He said that he hadn't been there all day since last night. So he hadn't been in the newspaper room since Thursday night. And he said he wrote down all of the things in next week's newspaper Thursday night. But here's the catch. At the very bottom, it says, Dakota saves Samson. But and that, that happened Friday, Friday morning. morning. So did he predict that Dakota, a random ass student, was gonna save a random ass adult the next morning? Or did he actually enter Friday morning? And he was in the newspaper. Well, let's see if our answer is correct. This is crazy because it's so hard to read. <gasps> Congratulations, you found the lie. You may now open the next one. Oh my god. No wonder there's no clue on this side, so it was in the back. Yeah. So we need to look at everything that's not showing. Okay, this is all sorts of weird. I don't know how to feel about it. This, I kind of feel like we already knew about it, but I don't think that this is really evidence. So you have to answer these questions, right? And I'm answering them because we already knew these answers, but I don't know how they're the smoking gun. So we knew that she had some weird on her shoe. We looked into that immediately after yeah. we found out that someone had tossed her shoe and there was clay on her shoe. We knew that she was in art class from the principal's letter. We knew that the art class was doing pottery from the newsletter. And then he was at the art class. The letter from the principal states that Mr. the doctor was at the art class Correct. prior to her death. Yeah. And the newspaper states that the art class was doing pottery. And then the shoes from the evidence pile states that she had clay on. But I feel like that's already something everybody knew but I don't know. It says I've solved it. Solved the what? The whole thing. The Verona community is in shock today over a chilling murder confession of former high school guidance counselor, Dr. Benjamin Gelding. We now go to Ali, who is live at East Verona High School. Thank you, Seb. Dr. Benjamin Gelding worked as a guidance counselor here at East Verona High School for over 35 years until retiring in 2015. Earlier today, he confessed to pushing a student out of the sixth floor window of the school on November 20th, 1992. According to Verona PD, Gelding was having an affair with the student and pushed her out of the window when she threatened to go public about their relationship. Dr. Gelding also covered up the crime by creating a fake suicide note and lying to police about the victim's past history of suicide thoughts. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I knew exactly that it was going to be him because he just looks like a fucking creep. So I was like, that's him. I and then, you uh, literally switch your story so many times. I know, I'm kidding. But that was my story for a long time though. This dude is always looking out for Jamie. I don't know. Seems creepy. But they were having an affair. His wife and kids were gonna get mad about it because it could hurt so many people. Everyone wants you to think it's the handsome Paul, but it's it's gonna be the guidance counselor. And I told you it was suspicious that he was the one that told the police, oh, she's been having suicidal thoughts. But why is the handsome Paul so suspicious in the theater? He said, we, we, we. Like, I what told is you, it? maybe he was doing another person. But everybody was at taking photos. Maybe he was doing Olivia. Olivia wasn't lying. Then maybe he was doing himself. <laughs> this is so insane. 
satisfying. Well, the ending doesn't make sense. So this is the last envelope. We've got a witness statement form from Joey Ferrari. What did he say? After seeing the news report about Jamie Banks and Dr. Gelding, I've decided to come forward with information I've held about decades ah, from this case. I knew that Jamie and Gelding were having an affair, but I never told anyone. But the day before I died, I heard the sounds of two people kissing near the window in the newspaper room above. You could tell it was with great passion because the kissing was quite loud. So he kept his mouth shut because Jamie was about to write a story exposing his betting scam with Johnny and he didn't want to draw attention to himself. They got over $100,000 in cash from their Betty's betting scheme. It was for college, but they took it to Atlantic City over Thanksgiving break. Oh, maybe it proves that he's the one did it because she has clay on her shoes and that clay was on his body. She got the clay from him and he got the clay from the art class who's doing clay. No, but she was in the clay room, no? No, she wasn't. She was doing painting. And the clay, the only way for her shoes to get clay is from him. And the only way for him to get the clay was he was in the clay class. So that's why he was the one that throw the shoes down because he was in clay room. He was touching all these clays from the student. Okay, so that makes sense. Kind of. Well, yeah, because he was touching the clay he and was touching, he threw the shoe. So he got the clay on, on the, the shoes. shoes. But we got it confused. We thought clay and our class were the same yeah. or something. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of unsatisfying. It's so unsatisfying. I'm sure I'm, I'm yeah. We should have won with your gut feeling. Save so much time. So this is Detective Mango's write-up. This is the whole story, motherfucker. So Jamie falls from the six-story window, the newspaper room, which is run by Dr. Benjamin Gelding. He is also the guidance counselor at the school. He is also the one that convinced the police that, wait a second, Jamie was already suicidal. So, I mean, it must have been a suicide and not a murder because I'm her guidance counselor and I should know that. Anyways, so he's the head of the newspaper and she fell a Friday morning out of the newspaper room six floors to her death Romeo why does he look like that oh you see wearing a wig he is the one that found her body and it was suspicious at the beginning because he played Romeo and she played Juliet last night at the school play and right after that Craig Zimmerman another person part of the newspaper he wrote a really bad review towards Jamie we later find out that it's because he is in love with Jamie but he was in the school picture so it couldn't have been Craig Zimmerman and it couldn't have been Romeo because he couldn't walk all the way from the sixth floor or run all the way from the sixth floor to find Jamie, he was ruled out as a suspect. These are the people that are unaccounted for. So Joey Ferrari is a booker. He writes a lot in the school newspaper about how much like he's a scammer. Him and Johnny are best friends and they're scamming the system. They're making the high school football bets or whatever. But he happened to be in the class picture so he had an airtight alibi. Not a suspect anymore. Back to the original five suspects. Now these two were oddly suspicious because we found out that Johnny Rocco had actually dated Jamie previously and so it was like oh my gosh like are they still dating because word has been around there has been lots of talk in that this high school that Jamie was seeing this person and she refused to tell anybody who she was dating because a lot of people would get hurt if she did and so people were thinking okay like are they back together because that would hurt a lot of people because he was in a relationship with Sophie Sunday I mean a really strong one because she had tattooed his name onto her ankle in a heart so I mean it was serious she's a cheerleader she's the football coach's daughter so maybe it was like some weird going on like this but apparently they were not it Olivia Underwood we think about her because she was the understudy of Jamie so she was excited to be the next Juliet and she kind of had a thing with you know the Romeo dude or whatever and it seemed like maybe she had killed Jamie in a rage of jealousy because she felt like she deserved the part and she only got it Jamie only got the lead because it seemed like the drama man Paul was obsessed with her but we later found out that that was not true and so then we were left with who killed Jamie one of these two mother forkers it's always the a creepy old dude. We thought it was Paul because, I mean, he's attractive. He's 10 years older than Jamie. I mean, they would make a cute couple if this was Pretty Little Liars and he was Ezra Fitz and he, she was Aria. But, um, it seems like it wasn't him. It just was too obvious. So many people were saying, oh my god, she was hooking up with Paul. So, of course, that couldn't be the answer. <laughs> then we're left 
with the guidance counselor man, right? And he was the one that told the police that she was already suicidal, which I never trust a forker like that. Never do it. When you watch these true crime videos or listen to these true crime podcasts or research true crime, you know that that's dumb, okay? Whoever is telling the police, well, they were already suicidal. I mean, I just don't like it. I don't like it one bit, sir. And so he told the police all of that and he happened to be in the newspaper room in the morning. We caught him in a lie because the guy wrote something on the chalkboard and we found the chalkboard lie. So you're going into jail. So apparently they were having an affair. This was the mystery man. This was the man. He has wife, he has kids, and he is obviously in an illegal relationship with Jamie. And she threatened to expose it to the world. So then he killed her in the newspaper room. And I'm sending you to prison. These days, we have a dog who is injured, who's not allowed to go outside because lots of things. You guys know what's up with Mingo. So we have this, what I call pee pee paradise. Just pee pee pads. You are about to get peed on by the scariest dog I've ever met. And that is your prison. You're so bad and so tough. Oh, you like a bad bleep? <laughs> I don't know if I would recommend this. You have to have the patience of a saint. I don't have the patience for stuff like this. I get curious, but just as quickly as I get curious, I mean, it takes a lot for me to stay curious, and this was really testing my limits. So let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts on this case? Would you guys ever want me to do another one? Did you guys follow along with me, or was it su super hard to understand? Sorry, I tried my best to explain it, but I just did had no idea what was going on. There's so much paper. I read so much, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>